Ultra processed foods are making the headlines around the world and everywhere we read that we must avoid them at all costs as they will cause all sorts of diseases. But is it really like that? Although most of us are certainly consuming too much ultra processed food and should try to reduce their intake, there is simply no evidence to recommend people to avoid ultra processed food all around. The reality is more complicated than that as nutritional science is never black and white. So stick around as I will summarize what the data are really telling us. So the term ultra processed food derives from the NOVA classification system, which classified food based purely on the level of industrial processing and not based on their nutritional characteristics. So as you can see from the figure, foods are divided into four groups. The first one is unprocessed or minimally processed foods. The second is processed culinary ingredient. The third is processed foods and the fourth is ultra processed food. So ultra processed foods are defined and I cite as a formulation of ingredients, mostly of exclusive industrial use that result from a series of industrial processes. So these are foods that are made starting from plant or animal products that undergo various treatment to, for example, isolate specific characteristics or nutrients or modify their chemical or physical properties. For example, to modify their color, flavor or texture. By contrast, processed foods are made from the combination of unprocessed food or group one and processed culinary ingredients of group two, which include salt, oil or sugar, but they don't undergo extensive industrial processing. The most obvious example of ultra processed food include soda, sugary cereals, fast food, ready to eat meals or packaged snacks, but they are not that easy to identify at a first glance. So how do you recognize them? You need to check the ingredient list and if you see any additive such as flavor or color enhancer or emulsifier or any ingredients which are very rarely, if at all, used in traditional cooking like various types of sugar, inverted sugar, high fructose corn syrup, modified oil like hydrogenated oils or any protein sources like hydrolyzed protein or mechanically separated proteins, then most likely you're in front of an ultra processed food. But if you're still a bit confused, don't worry, it's not your fault. Actually, a recent study shows that even food and nutritional specialists often do not agree in categorizing the same food as the ultra processed or not. And actually, this difficulty in correctly categorizing food is one of the main criticisms to the NOVA classification system. So ultra processed food have been accused to contribute or even be the main cause of the epidemics of obesity and chronic diseases which we are in. And indeed, so far, the evidence shows a positive association between consumption of ultra processed food and obesity measured as BMI, body fat percentage, abdominal obesity, but also a risk of chronic diseases, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, cancer, even mortality risk. However, so far, most of the evidence comes from observational studies, which means the scientists have simply asked people what they eat regularly, but they did not attempt to modify their diet. And this means that we can only look at the associations between ultra processed food intake and weight or health status, but we cannot investigate whether the higher consumption of ultra processed food actually causes the weight gain or illness. So at this point, only one intervention study has been published to investigate whether ultra processed food might actually cause weight gain. In this study, 20 healthy volunteers have been confined to a hospital ward for 28 days and they have been assigned to either a diet high in ultra processed food or a diet high in unprocessed food. 
and after two weeks on this diet they switched to the other one for the following two weeks. During the intervention they could eat as much as they wanted but only of the food that they were assigned to them. Among other things, scientists have found that during the two weeks in which they were assigned to the ultra-processed diet, people had a much higher energy intake and they increased their weight and fat mass, while they lost weight and fat mass during the two weeks in the unprocessed diet. It should be noted that this is only one study and it's also very small with only 20 volunteers, so it's certainly not sufficient on its own to prove any causal effect. In addition, even though scientists have tried to make two perfectly identical diets on a nutritional point of view differing only on the type of food that was included in either of them they actually realized that the ultra processed diet was higher in added sugar insoluble fiber saturated fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids and these differences might have affected the results but nonetheless this is a very important study and adds to the available evidence from observational studies suggesting that consumption of ultra processed food might actually affect our weight and overall health. But so what are the ways by which ultra processed food might affect our health? Well, unfortunately, we don't know precisely, but there are a few hypotheses on the study. One of the most accredited hypotheses is that ultra processed food consumption would result in a poorer overall diet quality given the uh, usually low nutritional quality of these products which are also designed to make us eat more. In fact, they're often high energy dense, which means they're highly caloric and they also contain a high proportion of saturated fat, salt, added sugar, while also containing lower proportion of fiber, minerals and vitamins. And in fact, a lot of studies have already shown that higher consumption of ultra processed food corresponds to a poorer diet quality while also a higher energy intake. However, it has been shown that not all ultra processed foods are of poor nutritional quality and actually approximately 18% of them are of high nutritional quality. This broadly include plant-based dairy alternatives, sliced whole grain bread and gluten-free products. Do they still contribute to our poor health? Well, probably not, as they are good sources of protein, fiber, vitamins and minerals. And indeed, this study, which combines the data from three large cohorts from the US, shows that when we analyze single categories of ultra-processed food separately, on the animal-based product, ready-to-eat dishes, and artificially or sugary sweetened beverages significantly increase the risk of type 2 diabetes, while other categories show a weaker association or even a potentially beneficial effect. So the biggest problem seems to be the amount of ultra processed food and especially of unhealthy ultra processed food eaten, which is simply too much right now. On average, people in Western countries get between 30 and 60% of their energy intake from ultra processed food. And the number are especially on the rise in low and middle income countries. And the problem is that this excessive intake limits the consumption of whole unprocessed food which are of higher nutritional quality while also being less caloric. So the ideal goal should be to reduce the consumption of products that don't provide any nutritional benefit and not of all ultra processed food at least until we have strong and clear evidence to state otherwise so it is important to be aware of the impact that ultra processed food might have on our health while also realizing that it's still an area of intense research with a lot of open questions and no definitive answers yet if you realize that you eat a very high proportion of ultra processed food and especially of the unhealthy type it's probably a good idea to try and reduce their intake a bit you may want to check this video in which i suggest you a strategy to change your lifestyle in a simple and sustainable way if you found this video useful don't forget to subscribe for more content on the science of lifestyle and if you have any questions or thought please share in the comment section below that's it for now and i'll see you in the next video bye